Hello and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today is the second part of the video on uh, Speedmaster Mark III. So let's start with the reassembly of the watch. Uh, so first I put the mainspring uh, barrel assembly and the ratchet wheel on the top. And now I go with uh, assembling the train of wheel. Uh, so you, you saw at the beginning it was some parts already on a, on a watch. Uh, the center wheel was already on them. Actually I had a big issue with the, with the recording of this video. Uh, I lost two times the recording of this video, so that was very frustrating. I had to disassemble this watch twice uh, to make a, a video on a reassembly. So it's never really good to, to disassemble and reassemble a watch. That was actually a, a very good practice for me on, uh, on this difficult chronograph. Uh, but yes, yeah, the, the third time was, uh, was the right time. So yeah, here is a video of the third disassembly or reassembly, sorry, on this watch. So here, yeah, I placed all the wheels of, uh, of all the wheels of the train of wheel. I just go very slowly to make sure they uh, are all aligned in uh, in uh, in their respective uh, jewel hole, just to make sure that they can spin freely. So you can see it go very very slowly until like this uh, this wheel go underneath and it's kind of sandwiched between two other wheels, so you need to find the right place uh, very slowly and just to make sure you don't uh, get too nervous about it, like you just need to take your time. Okay, it looks like it's, it's in position now. Perfect. Okay, so let's put a bit of uh, lubrification, so a bit of 9104 on this pivot point, where you have a wheel, this wheel will be uh, connecting the the barrel assembly to the automatic winding. And this wheel as well will transmit uh, the winding movement of the rotor to the, to the main spring barrel. Here you can see the bridge. You can see there is some parts underneath already assembled. And now we, could, we put this huge bridge. Uh, basically, it's a, a train wheel bridge and the uh, main spring bridge all in one, so yeah, that's a huge plate that you need to put on top of it. So first, everything needs to be aligned. So that's, that's why you see me go slowly to find the right place. There is a wheel which has uh, an extended pivot, so you need to make sure it's located correctly. Now it looks like it's almost in place. There we go. I can push very slowly, gently, to make sure everything falls in place. And the same, I need to make sure all the wheels are on the top respective uh, jewel hole. There we go, everything is looking good. Just checking with the wheels if when everything moves, is they connect to each other. And you can see now, you, you saw the plate just going down, so everything is sitting in the right place. Just making turn the, the barrel to see if everything is connected and all the wheels should move uh, together. Now everything is connected, I put the, the screws. So there is three screws holding this plate. There we go. And now last check, you can see, you can see the escape wheel was turning, so all good. Let's move up to the other side. And uh, we are going to assemble the, the keyless work. So the first bit of the keyless work is uh, pretty standard. Uh, just uh, putting a bit of grease, some 9501, on the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. So they go in position. Putting a bit of grease as well on the, on the winding stem. Putting it in place. There we go putting a bit of uh, oil uh, in a hole where we are going to put the, the setting lever. Nicely in place. Grease on a contact point. This, this uh, come on the top and will act as a spring on top of the setting lever. Just put it in place. You can see they're aligning with the holes where I need to. This uh, screw is very, very small. 
So you need to be very careful when you locate it and just make sure you secure it in place. I just clean the excess grease, put a bit of grease in the middle of the clutch wheel where the yoke is going to come. And now I put the, the yoke in place. Bit of grease on this uh, pressure point. And I put the spring. I use a, a tweezer and a plastic stick to make sure it doesn't jump. And there we go. Now it's nicely in place. I lubricate the contact point. Clean the excess. This is where the rest of the wheels are going to come. Put a bit of uh, 9104 first, and I can put the wheels. And the sitting lever spring on top of it that will keep everything in place. Just need to make sure it's aligned with the holes where I'm going to put the screws. Good. Now we put uh, one screw for now, just secure it in place, and now I can put the setting lever spring under tension. There we go, now it's nicely in place, just need to make sure, yes, it's falling in place nicely. And now I can screw it fully, tie it down, that it doesn't move. Put a bit of 90, uh, not sorry, some 9501, put some grease there because it's a pressure point make sure it's nicely lubricated and now we can check that everything is working so it is three position you can see so winding uh, setting uh, quick setting date and uh, changing time okay all looking good so this is like uh, like I said it's uh, a keyless work which is a, a standard keyless work so that's like we can find on other uh, watches normal watches so now let's focus, uh, we are going to assemble the, the hour bridge, but first we need to put the hour hammer and this bridge with the hour wheel from the chronograph, which is uh, on attached already to this plate. Okay, same, we need to put it in place, make sure everything is aligned properly. Clean any excess uh, grease or any debris on a part. Check everything is rotating, everything is sitting down properly. Now we can secure it with the screws. So far so good on the movement, just put a bit of uh, 9104, just to make sure everything is nicely lubricated, all the pivot point. There we go, a bit of grease on, uh, on, the hand, on the, at the end of the hammer. And now I can move back on the other side and put the pallet fork. Just to make sure again, it's get nicely. There we go. Now it looks like it's in place. And I can put the pallet for cork on top of it. Just to make sure it's staying. Now I just need to make uh, some light pressure on it until it uh, fell right in, uh, in, in a place, in the right place. There we go. Now it looks like it's sitting down and you can see it move it moving right left. So good we can secure it with the with two screws. Okay, so let's check if the pallet fork is moving. Yes, you can see it's clicking. So the power is coming to the pallet fork, that's good. And uh, now let's see the first crucial point. We're gonna see if the when we put the balance assembly if the watch is working. 
Okay, first I line it with the bottom piece, bottom part. Just gently putting it in place. Looks like it's not correctly in place now. Just need to move it just very gently a bit. You need to be very gentle with this part. You don't want to damage the spring. Oh, you saw it just wanted to start, but it's not perfectly aligned. No, not there. No. Just try to move it. Yeah, it looks better now. There we go. Just, you see, a little movement make it fall in place. And now it's, uh, the watch is uh, beating. So just, let's put the, the screw on the balance assembly. Perfect. So now basically we have like a normal watch. We have uh, a, a watch with a train of wheels, a barrel, a balance assembly, a keyless work on the other side. Now we need to carry on uh, with the rest of the watch, which is a chronograph mechanism. So this watch is perfectly working now. It will work and give the time, but we need to add all the extra parts uh, to have the chronograph function. So yeah, and you, can, you will see that's a lot more parts than on a normal watch. Uh, with a simple complication if you want. Okay, so let's start on a, on a chronograph uh, on a chronograph mechanism. You can see there is a lot of screws already on on top of the bridge. So during the disassembly, I, like I said, I, I keep the screws in place because there is a lot more screws on a chronograph mechanism and they are all have s very small differences. But yeah, one screw go only to one place. So to make sure you put the right screw at the right place, you, you keep it in place during the disassembly. So you will see, so first I remove one screw and I put a part in place. So here I put uh, the, the cam. So there is, the cam is in two parts, you have a, a lower and upper part. And as soon as the part is, is, is in place, you put the screw back. So like that, you are sure that you put the, the right the right screw at the right place. Yeah, you don't you you don't mix them basically. Okay, so now we carry on um, with um, carry on with the the chronograph mechanism. So you see again, I remove the screw, put the part. Here I'm greasing the spring, the end of the spring. So the operating uh, lever spring. Just greasing, like oiling the pivot of the operating lever yoke. That's a system basically when you will uh, activate or click on, uh, on a chronograph that will connect to, to the cam. Now I just need to make sure the spring is in the tension. There we go. Perfect. I can secure the part. Remove two screws. That's the screws where we're going to have the operating lever. So first need to put a, a bit of uh, 9104 on the post. And this is operating lever that's connected to the to the pusher, to the chronograph pusher. I put the screw back. Just clean, as always, the, the, the excess of oil or grease. This is, uh, lubricate the points that will come in contact with the, with the cam and clean the excess. This is a chronograph wheel, so that basically the second wheel of the chronograph. Just pull it through the, the center. It's on a little spring, you see, to keep it under tension. And this is a part uh, that I use as well that come in contact uh, with the wheels which are underneath, which are, you remember, the wheels that we put for the automatic winding system. These are the reverse wheel. So it means that you can wind, the rotor can turn both ways and your, your watch will still wind. And 
and there is already some parts that were assembled that I did not disassemble uh, for the third time I did this watch. I told you already at the beginning, and I put the the, the chronograph bridge uh, on top of it. So you have a jewels where the the chronograph wheel gonna come. Just need to make sure, like with the other bridge, that everything is aligned. And when it is, I secure everything with the screws. All the different points. I grease up all the contact points from the cam. There is a lot of contact points on the, on the cam because you will see there is a lot of parts uh, coming in contact with this uh, with these parts. This is a blocking lever that will come against and like this name say it will block the chronograph uh, wheel, so that while, when you push the chronograph button for the second time, when you stop, when you stop it, that will come in, in contact with the wheel and, and uh, stop it. So you see it's under tension, there is a spring, there we go, and you see now I release the spring on, on tension against the part. And I put a screw on top of it. Clean again the excess, grease, Okay, so now on this part we are going to put the, the, the coupling bridge with the coupling wheel. You will see what's the function of the, the bridge and the wheel a bit later when we'll uh, activate the chronograph. Okay, bit of oil there because in there you will have some contact metal to metal. This screws has a shoulder uh, underneath and uh, it will come in contact with the bridge. Okay, and now I put uh, the chronograph driving wheel. That's, that's uh, This driving wheel basically is what makes the connection between the train off wheel underneath so and the top uh, part of the part, so the, the part where you have the chronograph mechanism. Okay, so now I just press it down with a tool to make sure it sits nicely at the same height at the coupling, uh, coupling wheel if you want. These are, you see, there is two arms on each side, is springs. So you need to make sure like uh, everything is kept under tension. So when you activate the chronograph, the, the bridge are, are moving. I'm greasing all the point, oiling all the point. And this is a hammer. So basically that's, what, that's a part that will come in contact with the wheels to reset. When you need to reset the wheels to zero, when you reset your chronograph. Okay. And this is a hammer spring. And it's like the spring there is some tension in them, so when you when you when you put them in place, you need to use a bit of force, not too much, obviously, but a bit of force to to put them under tension. So you, you use two tweezers or two parts, a plastic stick and a tweezer. Now you see I'm holding it in place with the tweezer. I'm going to put a screw there. Screw it a little bit, and now I'm putting it under tension, under the parts where it come against. A, a little pivot point. There we go. Now it's in place. Just cleaning the excess grease and it's in place. Now I'm putting a pusher. Screw the, on top of it. There is a screw that we come and uh, secure the pusher in place. And now I'm putting, that's a connecting rod basically, that's a rod that will connect the chronograph because you will see you will have some chronograph part on the other side, on the dial side. So this part will connect both sides uh, when you activate the chronograph. See now I'm activating the chronograph, it started. 
I'm disengaging and I'm resetting. So in the reset, obviously, it doesn't work because on the other side, we need to put some spring on the other side. And I forgot to put one part on the first time. So now we move to the dial side. I need to remove the hour bridge. And I forgot to put this uh, little plates that come in contact with the pusher. And you come locate on the little pivot point there. There we go. And now we come in contact with the pusher. You see, there we go on the hammer there, come in contact with the hammer just to make sure the contact point is uh, greased up properly. So if you like the video, please uh, like and subscribe. It will uh, help me to, to grow the channel and uh, keep me motivating. If you have any comment, put some comment down below. That will help me a lot as well. If you want to see different stuff or if you like what you see, it's always nice to, to know. Uh, so thanks for your support. Okay, so now I put back the our bridge after adding the, the part I forgot the first time. Okay, checking everything in place. It's looking good. Perfect. So now we can carry on with the rest of the mechanism. So this is the stopping system that will release the center, the center minute wheel. Because you will see on this chronograph, the minute wheel is in the center. It's a nice end with like the blue plane at the end. It looks like a plane. So this is uh, the spring that will release or unrelease the, the minute end of the chronograph. They are spring loaded, you can see. And up, oh, they come in contact. There you go. These two parts are spring loaded. I'm just greasing up the point. So you can see, compared to uh, uh, my other watch I have done on the channel, with like even with a date mechanism or some simple complication, let's say, this, uh, this watch has a lot more parts. A lot more parts. A uh, lot of lot more screws. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot more complicated than uh, than a standard watch. So when you disassemble them and especially reassemble them, I use the service manuals that I could find on the uh, internet about this uh, this movement. This is very important. Uh, yeah, because there is a lot of uh, a lot of parts. So to just to make sure to remember how they go together and as well in which order they go together and compared to a normal watch as well you you have a lot more points to oil and grease like on simple parts you will have some rule of thumbs if you want if you even if you don't have an oil chart you know more or less where you need to oil and grease which oil you need to use which grease you need to use uh, but there on this watch is like very special and yes, yeah, there is a lot more point to oil and grease, so yes, yeah, it's, it's better to find a service manual for, for the mechanism. Okay, so now we are progressing uh, nicely. Just put uh, a spring in place, again, it's uh, under tension, so we need to use a bit of force to put it in place with a tweezer and a plastic stick. Until you find, there we go, now it's in place, and it will be a little screw that come on top of it. Perfect. This part is for the to drive as a calendar mechanism. There we go. And now we can put a plate, top plate and the, the dial side will be fully assembled. And now basically the last layer, so this is like a sandwich if you want, you will have different layers. The last layer on top of, of there will be the, the calendar mechanism. Okay, again, we need to make sure everything falls in place. You will have some pins that need to be located, some, uh, some holes where you have the screws that need to be aligned. 
And when it's done, this is secure in place with four screws. Just checking, starting the chronograph. Now we have all the chronograph part assembled, stopping it and resetting. You need to use the right side. You will see the hammer coming in place and resetting everything. Just checking, yeah, it's already done. Perfect. Okay, so now let's put a bit of, uh, of oil. We need to put the cam for the minute. So the cam is uh, basically is, uh, in the middle, the minute end. You will see the central minute end. I'm oiling the cam just to make sure, especially when you want to reset, that it comes to zero. Greasing the pivot point for the calendar mechanism. This is a wheel on this watch where you will have a 24 hours indicator you will see later on. Go now, that's a, that's a wheel. We'll do the connection with the hour wheel, and this wheel is, is kept in place with, uh, with a screw in the middle. Only the pivot point for the date jumper. This is a date jumper. Here we go, it's in place. And now I can put back the date disc with a pair of carbon tweezers because you don't want to damage the day disc which is in good shape. Here we go, try to locate it as close as possible to this position. I put the hour wheel, a bit of 9104 and the calendar plate on top of it that will keep everything in place. Again, same thing, everything needs to be aligned. And when it is, we can secure it with the screws. Perfect. So far, so good on the, on the assembly. That's the day jumper spring, just to make sure the day jumper is kept under tension and it will give you a nice change of date, a jump, basically at uh, close to midnight when the date is changing. Perfect. Greasing the day jumper. And now I can check. Okay, you see. That's a quick set date function when I'm, in, I'm, I'm at the second position. So it's working perfectly. Now I can put the dial. So on this watch, the dial is just uh, press fitted. There is no dial screws that keep it in place. So I just need to make sure it's aligned with the dial fit. In the right in the holes and just gently press it into position. You want to go very slowly because you don't want to damage this dial. There we go. You see now it's gently in position. Perfect. And you can see the 24 hours uh, dials on the, on the left side. Okay, so now we are going to put uh, the hands. So first, put the hour hand. So I use this Aurotec tool to press it in, in position. Now I just put a, a gentle pressure. I align it perfectly to midnight. I already set uh, the date just after midnight and now I'm pressing it in place. Perfect. Now I use the same process to put the minute hand from the chronograph. Just I put a bit of pressure, align it. And when it is, I press it into position. You want to be as precise as possible because you want all the hand to align, especially for the chronograph. Perfect. Now we put the third end is a minute hand. Again, just make sure you it's at midnight because you want the change of date to happen at midnight or as close as possible to midnight. You 
perfect and the last hand that go in the center is the second hand from the chronograph this is the second running hand so this uh, that's the second hand that will run all the time it's not linked to the chronograph it will keep on running just checking is uh, not touching anything and this is a uh, in a write down at six o'clock is a hour hand from the chronograph just pressing it down make sure it's aligned at uh, zero and let's check the chronograph so let's start it see if it's moving perfect let's run it for for a little while see if it's running uh, if it's running well You can see the blue hand, which are the, the the minute hand from the chronograph. And after what we want to check is uh, we want to check that when we stop it, the chronograph reset perfectly to zero. Stop. Reset. Perfect. Pretty pleased with it. It's not very uh, easy because you have to align four hands, which is a lot. Uh, so yeah, now I clean the, the case, I clean the spring, the pushers are working very well. I replace the crystal on the watch, uh, so the case is looking quite nice. So now let's uh, put the case back. Look at this mechanism, it's, it's beautiful, this, this mechanism is... I love the Omega mechanism, especially the chronograph with this color. They are so nice. It's a shame, like at the time they did not do some uh, uh, crystal uh, case back because it would be so nice to see this uh, this mechanism at the back of a watch. Okay, I put uh, the, the, the stem in the crown. This is a mechanism ring that should make sure the mechanism stay in place and centered perfectly. Here we go, fall in place. And now I can assemble the rotor from the automatic winding system. You can see you have a bearing in the middle with three holes. That's where you have to I have to locate the, the holes where we're gonna put the three screws. Here we go, you see the holes. Now I need to make sure everything is aligned the best I can. And I'm gonna put the screws. They are very, very small. There we go. And now need to secure everything in place. Just checking everything is rotating. Yes, perfect. Both sides, both ways. All good. Put a tension ring that will keep the, mo the movement uh, in place. I already changed the gasket. I put a new gasket that I greased. And now I can put uh, the case back. I did not polish uh, the case or the case back. I just wanted to keep it. Uh, it was, to be fair, not in bad state. And to keep it uh, as original as I could, I just changed the crystal. And here we go, now the watch is in a case, looking so nice with this blue hand. And you can see the chronograph working. This is, to be fair, one of my best watch and it will go right into my collection. And here is a, re this is a result on a time grapher. So you can see the, the amplitude when it's stabilizing around 250 to 60 degree, not bad. And uh, the, the rate at minus three or around zero second per day uh, and the beat error at zero, so that's perfect. And this is yeah, the best uh, automatic chronograph I think in my collection for now, one of the best. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.